In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to solo complete the main easter egg on the Black Ops 3 Zombies map Gorod Krovi. You can take a look at the description for the timing of each step in case you're looking for something in particular. Now before we start, here are some of the gobble gums I would recommend. I would say the most important ones are Danger Closest, Undead Man Walking, and Immolation Liquidation. If you have any Perkaholics, that would be great too, but if not, you can always use the Poor Man's Perkaholic, which is Soda Fountain. Now before we actually start with the steps, I would recommend trying to get the reg on Mark 3, the Dingo, and Monkey Bombs from the box. This is where Immolation Liquidation comes in handy, so be sure to get those as soon as you can. You also want to upgrade your weapons as soon as possible too. So the very first thing you need to do is make your way over to Dragon Command and turn on the power. Once you do this, the zombies will begin to periodically drop blue, yellow, and red code cylinders. These are needed to activate Pack-a-Punch. If you need a reminder on how to do that, you can find a link to my quick guide in the description. Once you're at Pack-a-Punch, you'll need to do a couple of things. First, go ahead and begin the lockdown event so you can obtain the Dragon Strike controller. After that, before leaving, shoot this dragon egg so it'll roll down for you to pick up, and finally, jump into the sewer and shoot this red light above your head. As soon as you see it approaching, just start shooting near it and the light should turn green. From there, you can now begin working on getting the Gauntlet of Siegfried. Again, if you need a reminder, guide in the description. I should also note that the following steps can be done in any order, so for example, you don't have to get the Gauntlet done first before moving on. The next part we're going to do requires you to kill a Valkyrie in the lower level of Pack-a-Punch. When you do this, it should activate a nearby generator. Now you do have a limited amount of time to get this next part done before the generator turns off, but you can turn it back on by simply interacting with it. So once that's on, go ahead and make your way back to the main map. What you must now do is check six valves around the map. The first one we're going to start with can be found in the department store. If you come up these stairs, it's located to your left on this wall. The second one is in the armory area. It's on the wall opposite of that 500 point bridge. The third one is on the lower level of the supply depot. You can find it under the balcony next to this mystery box location. The fourth one is in Dragon Command. If you come up these stairs and take a right, you can find it on the wall to your left. The fifth one is in the infirmary, which is the area just above the operations bunker. It's tucked in the corner by these bunk beds. And the final valve is on the lower level of the tank factory next to a zombie spawn. Now one of these valves will have a green light on it, and another will have a code cylinder stuck in its tube. Once you find those two, you need to take note of where they are. For this next part, I would recommend using Milo's Valve Solver on his website, which is powered by Absolute Travesties Combinations. It makes the step 10 times easier, and you can find a link to it in the description. All you have to do is input where you found that green light, as well as where your cylinder is stuck. The solver will then automatically give you the solution needed to unlock the cylinder. You just have to visit each valve in the order that was given from your solution, and make sure they're each set on the correct number. So for example, my solution says to set the Dragon Command Valve to 1. This means I have to interact with it until the circle of that little hand is over the 1. Once you've gone through and made sure each valve is on the correct number, head back to the code cylinder and it should now be available for you to pick up. Next, make your way to Sophia and interact with her to return the cylinder. This will open a set of dials which you must use to input a password. The password is Kronos and you can turn the dials by simply shooting them. I would recommend either saving a zombie at the end of the round to do this, or do it while the round is changing because this whole thing can be a bit finicky. Once you've spelled the word out, interact with Sophia again to confirm the password. This will momentarily freeze the round for her to deliver some dialogue. Now before moving on to the next step, you must first collect six trophies. Again, like I said, you can actually begin collecting these trophies as soon as you have access to them. The easiest one to get can be shot down from this mural, which is just outside of Dragon Command. It'll fall into the map where you can pick it up. The second can be obtained by blasting a pipe at the tank factory with the shield. This will spit the trophy up through this window. The third one is located at the supply depot. To get it, you have to activate the I-beam trap and wait for it to reveal a safe in the floor for which the trophy will be inside. To get the fourth trophy, you need to call a dragon strike on this puddle outside of the supply depot. After it's done, the trophy will rise out of the ground. To get the fifth one, you'll have to head to Pack-a-Punch. A trophy should now be resting in this toilet since you shot that red light in the sewer. And the final trophy can only be obtained with the Gauntlet of Siegfried. Go ahead and pull it out, then hit your left trigger to launch the whelp. This will allow you to punch the safe open and collect the trophy. I would recommend hitting your left trigger again to call your dragon back, then put the gauntlet away so you don't waste too much of it. Now with all six trophies, interact with this command council to begin their challenges. The order of five of these challenges will be different every game, so I'm just going to go through each one of them starting from left to right. Also, with the start of each challenge, you'll have an infinite amount of zombie spawns, so just keep that in mind. The very first one is the Gersh Soul Challenge. When the light lands on this one, you must go around the map and search for a yellow orb. You'll be able to see a light trail of where it's been, which direction it's heading, and you'll be able to hear it. The orb will continue to move around the map until you fail to find it. By the way, if you do fail one of these challenges, you'll have to retry them on the next round. So anyway, Anyway, once you find the orb, whether it's moving or not, shoot it with the upgraded Raygun Mark III. This will freeze the orb in just one shot and cause Gersh to begin talking. After he's done, the orb will then start to fly off. Try and shoot it as fast as possible again so it doesn't get too far. If you don't have the Raygun Mark III for this, you'll have to use some other kind of upgraded weapon. So once Gersh is done talking for a second time, you'll then need to try and quickly shoot him again. So in total, you're shooting Gersh three times. After that, you can head back to Dragon Command where the orb will head as well. Once there, the zombies for that challenge will die and you can begin the next 
next one by interacting with the council again. The second challenge is the bomb defusal. For this one, areas of the map on the council screen will light up one after another. You must take note of which area lights up and in what order. I like to record this part so I can go back and look at the footage, but if you can't do that, you can always pause the game to write down each location or record yourself saying them as they appear on the screen. Once you've got the order, you then have to defuse their bombs in under three minutes. I'm now going to show you where each bomb is actually located, but again, your order will be different than mine. Starting at Supply Depot, the bomb can be found on the wall to the left of this zombie spawn, the Tank Factory's bomb can be found in the left side room with the Gobble Gum Machine, the Infirmary's bomb is located on this column just before taking the stairs down into the Operations Bunker, the Department Store's bomb can be found under these stairs in the area just outside of spawn, Dragon Command's bomb is located on the wall just outside of the Mystery Box room, and the Armory's bomb can be found on the piece of debris to the left of this Wonderfizz machine. If you've defused them all in time, your screen will go white and you can move on to the next challenge. If you don't do it in time or in the right order, all the active bombs will explode and instantly down you if you're near them. The third challenge is the Green-Eyed Mangler. When you get this one, you must find a Green-Eyed Mangler somewhere on the map and he will be aimlessly walking around. I like to start my search at the tank factory first, then make my way across the map. Be sure to listen closely when searching every area because you will be able to hear him talking. Once you found him, I would recommend shooting his arm cannon at the shoulder, which should destroy it. This will then cause him to sprint after you without stopping. From there, closely lead him to this teleporter pad at Dragon Command, and he should be collected by a crane. Also, keep in mind, normal red-eyed manglers will spawn during this, so just be sure to get rid of them once you've checked their eyes. The fourth challenge is the Valkyrie Escort. Once you get this, head over to the left side of spawn and wait for the Valkyrie to fly into the map. You'll then want to stand as close as possible to it to keep it moving. You need to escort the Valkyrie all the way back to Dragon Command. This is probably one of the trickiest challenges, so I would recommend using Undead Man Walking so the zombies aren't an issue. You should also throw out all of your Widow's Wine Grenades, because the slightest damage dealt to this Valkyrie will destroy it, and you'll have to try again on the next round. Once you reach Dragon Command, bring the Valkyrie to the teleporter, and it should be collected by the crane. The fifth challenge is the Groth Pod. When you get this one, an area of the map on the screen will light up that you must run to. Once there, you'll see that a Groth Pod has landed outside the map that you must protect from zombies until it's charged. Once the pod is done and opens up, pull out your gauntlet, and launch the whelp. The dragon will fly down to the pod to collect its cargo and then bring it back up to you. Pick up the cargo, then place it inside Sophia's drawer. And the final challenge is the hatchery download. This will always be your last challenge, and when you get it, a drawer will open up with a keycard inside that you must collect. From there, head over to Pack-a-Punch and place the keycard inside this machine. This will start a download progress as well as another lockdown event just like for the Dragon Strike. But this time, the spawns are only going to be manglers. So as soon as one of the barriers opens up, start killing manglers with the Raygun Mark III. You can take them out in two or maybe three shots. You'll then want to save one mangler at the end and just train him around until the download is complete. If you accidentally kill all of them and another barrier opens up, just try to save one at the end of that wave. Once the download is complete, kill the remaining mangler and take the keycard back from the machine. A max ammo will also be waiting for you by Pack-a-Punch, so don't forget to grab that before you leave. Now, go ahead and make your way back to Sophia and deposit the keycard. After some dialogue, she will provide you with a weapon core that you need to pick up. Once you've got it, head over to spawn and launch your whelp. The dragon will take the core over to Nikolai outside of the map to power his weapon system. Then all that's left to do is head back to Sophia to watch her fly off into the sky. After she's gone, her terminal will slide backwards to reveal a grate on the floor. You're now ready for the boss fight. Before you go, be sure to have a full shield, an upgraded dingo or some kind of upgraded weapon, all of your perks and monkey bombs. You'll also want to get danger closest to protect yourself from explosives. Once you think you're ready, stand on the grate to enter the boss fight. When you arrive, go ahead and interact with this button to free Nikolai from the building. Now during this first stage, Nikolai will be helping you kill zombies and dealing with the dragon. All you need to do is pull out your shield and just keep running around. Eventually the dragon will blow fire on the arena. Just keep your shield out and wait for it to fade. Nikolai will then fire a spear at the dragon and cause it to kneel over. As soon as he does this, throw a monkey bomb, then get to an area close to the dragon where you won't burn from its fire. When it starts to blow fire again, use your dingo to shoot the glowing weak spot on its shoulder from Nikolai's spear. With one clip, you should be able to complete that phase. This must be done two more times. For the first phase, the dragon will always be on the left side of the arena, so you'll be shooting at its shoulder. For the second phase, the dragon will land on the opposite end and you'll be shooting at its ribs, and for the final phase, the dragon will land in the back center where you have to shoot at its neck. So just keep your shield out, wait for Nikolai to spear the dragon, throw a monkey bomb, then focus on shooting the weak spot. Once you've completed all three phases, the dragon will die. After that, a mini cutscene will begin to play, but before it does, I would recommend you quickly run and collect the max ammo in the center of the arena so you're all ready to go for the final stage. For the final stage, you'll have to defeat Nikolai. You do this by shooting and destroying
destroying certain parts of his mech suit. He'll have two cores on his left and right shoulder that will periodically be exposed, two yellow vents on the front of his mech, then the actual weapons core below that, which won't actually open until you've destroyed everything else. The best way to survive this is to always keep moving and never stand still for too long. I would recommend running on the outside of the arena so you're constantly in and out of the trenches and rubble. You've still got monkey bombs from that last max ammo, and there is now another one in the center again if you need it. Also, the Ray Gun Mark III is great for taking out Valkyries and Manglers if you need to. Now this is where Danger Closest comes in handy because Nikolai has a lot of explosive firepower. At some points, he will also stop to fire off dozens of wraps. This is when at least one or both of those cores on his shoulders will be exposed. If you turn off aim assist, you'll be able to lay down some heavy fire into the cores without being dragged away by the wraps. You'll know a core is destroyed when it starts to spark. While waiting for him to release those wraps, you can always focus on the front vents and whenever a core pops up. Like I said, keep moving and take this slow. After those are destroyed, all that's left is the weapons core. This will be the yellow box below the chest. Again, take it slow and safely put as many bullets into it as you can. After destroying the weapons core, Nikolai will fall over and the cutscene will begin to play. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment them down below and I'll be sure to help in any way that I can. Anyway, have fun with this easter egg and I wish you luck.